Jagrat. Most people have difficulty going through the day-to-day -day experiences of life without feeling tension, stress, anxiety, impatience, fear, just a periphery of energies that come up inside even just in the course of a normal day. It is so prevalent that it is considered normal. In this society, stress and those variety of feelings and experiences are just accepted as a necessary part of Western pace of life. This is not true. The person who has taken on the real challenge is the one who dares to stand on the center of truth and interact with every single thing, every single moment of every single day, with no exception from that place. If you do so, you will not have problems with these experiences. The center of truth is that nothing is happening. The commotion, the disturbance, the melodrama are being created by you. You're sitting on a planet in the middle of nowhere, absolutely in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing else going on except that this giant ball of dirt is spinning around a star. That's about the biggest thing that's happening. And I forgot, it's also turning on its axis. So you have this thing rotating on its axis and spinning around the star. That's all that's happening. There's nothing else happening. It's all just on this little piece of dirt in the middle of nowhere. Where's the stress? Where's the impatience? Where's the tension? Where's the fear? Where's the anxiety? Where's the insecurity? Where are these things? When the reality is that it goes on forever in every direction, you can shout as loud as you want. Nothing hears you. It's just infinite. Now, though that should be a spiritual truth, because it's very deep, it's not is the truth. Even non-spiritual people know about that one. Everybody understands that they are sitting on a planet in the middle of nowhere, spinning around one out of a billion stars in one galaxy, and there's billions of galaxies. How do we get off making a melodrama out of this? How can it be this hard? Why are there so many problems? And aside from the fact that that's all that's going on, and please remember it, as if that's not enough to free you, you don't even stay here forever. You stay here for a tiny little piece of time. You know, 50, 60, 70 years or something. It's absolutely nothing. It goes by so fast you blink your eyes, you missed it. All right? And you get to spend a very finite, very finite, remember, I mean, it's been here billions of years, it's spun around the same star. You know, 70, 80 years ain't a whole lot compared to billions. So like a tiny little piece of time, just a speck of time on a speck of dirt. And you can't handle it. Let's get good and personal. You freak out. You get uptight. You go ballistic. A speck of time on a speck of dirt. That's how you have to look at it. Because that's the truth. And that's all that's going on. And now, both of those parts, everybody understands. Everybody knows you ain't staying. And everybody knows it's just a speck of time on a speck of dirt. And you should not have a single speck of a problem. It's none of your business. You didn't create the speck of dirt. And you don't determine the speck of time. It's enough that it's so little, so finite in both cases, 
But then you realize it's not even under my control. It has nothing to do with me. It was here before I got here. It will be here after I leave. Now, why not live that? Why not take that absolute truth and bring it into every moment of every day of your life? Then whatever happens is just what happened during this speck of time on this speck of dirt. It's not such a big deal. It's okay. And at some point in your life, you get tired of your melodrama. And that's the point I want to know you. <laughs> you're much more fun once you got tired of your melodrama. Until you're tired of your melodrama, you're very melodramatic. Okay? <laughs> that's the way it goes. You're just going to be getting into this melodrama and you're going to try to suck everybody else in with you, aren't you? All right? So, at some point you realize, I make of my life what I make of my life. It's the speck of time on the speck of dirt. Don't want to be happy, don't want to be sad. Do I want to love people or do I want to have friends and not friends and disharmonies and all this kind of stuff? Don't sit there and tell me it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with you. You can, to quote a phrase, coin a phrase, love your enemies. Not because you're supposed to, just because they're fun. Right? They're like, why do people put pepper on their food? That's like, you know, an enemy. Somebody's mean to you. Somebody has mean things to say to you. Somebody's down on you. Somebody thinks you're ugly. They can't even stand to be around you. All right? That, that brings up different energies. It gets the shakti flowing. And what do you want? Everything to be sugar? You got yin and yang going on here. You got to balance all this stuff. You all learn to eat that way. Why can't you learn to live that way? There's nothing wrong with anything. It's all just experiences that are happening during this little speck of time on this speck of dirt. If you think you can control them, you've still got a whole trip to go out there and realize it's none of your business how other people are. It's just absolutely none of your business. If somebody has the tendencies within themselves to be a certain way, and you decide you don't want them to be that way, you're in big trouble. Because you can, from the outside, make them be any way you want, maybe. It's a lot of work. If you haven't caught on, it's a lot of work. But you didn't change anything. Nothing changes from the outside. Absolutely nothing. Nothing ever changes from the outside, does it? It's got to change from its roots. It's got to change from its structure. It's got to be real. And if you just go there and do something manipulative to get something to change on the facade, you're going to have to keep it that way forever. Your full-time job. Forget it. Don't even go to school. Just sit there and keep that person the way you want them. Because the minute you walk away, they're going to be the way their tendency tells them to be, aren't they? Have you seen people's tendencies and how strong they are? I hope you have. Have you seen your tendencies and how strong they are? I hope you have. That even when you mean to change something, boom, there are those tendencies again. Darn tendencies. They come up from inside, don't they? And the next thing you know, you're behaving in a way that you said you weren't going to behave. You're doing things that you said you weren't going to do. Anybody notice that? Tendencies are very strong. So not only do you have them, but other people have them. So if you decide that other people should behave the way you want them to, you're going to ruin your speck of time and the speck of dirt. You're going to someday wake up realizing you're fighting with everything. Realize you're afraid of everything. Realize your mind is constantly thinking what could go wrong. Constantly looking at all the possible scenarios and options of what might happen that you don't like or how you might lose what you do like. Anybody ever have that even once, maybe? goes on a lot, doesn't it? Constantly checking it out, going through the possibilities and so on. You've ruined your life. That's not fun. Why would you want to live like that? <laughs> Why would you want to do that? You don't have to do that. You don't ever have to do that. All you have to do is be willing to let things be what they are. You'd be willing to let someone's tendencies be what their tendencies are. Be willing to let life be life. Be willing to permit the situations of life to unfold in the natural way that the situations of life will unfold. And experience them. And realize that you can handle the highs and the lows, the goods and the bads. All of the opposites can come to you and help you and be experiential. This is how you live your life without melodrama. You are making the melodrama.
there is no melodrama. If somebody comes to you and throws love all over you and then leaves, then you experience what it is like to have love thrown all over you and you experience what it is like to have someone leave after they have thrown love all over you. Did you not want that experience? Why? Which one do you want? Which one do you not want? There are lots of experiences to be had. Why are you so sure it's the trip to Paris that you want and not that? Why are you so sure you want the person that comes and throws love all over you and just keeps throwing love all over you and never leaves? You might get very tired of it. How do you know which experience you want? You think you know. Are you ever right? No. <laughs> You're never right. If you were right, you'd be in samadhi. Got it the way I want it. It's over. Ecstasy. It doesn't work like that. You don't know what you want. And the very fact that you want or don't want is what's ruining your life. Otherwise, you're living your life instead of manipulating your life, instead of thinking about your life, instead of controlling your life, instead of fighting with your life, instead of melodramaing your life. You're not supposed to be doing that. There's only a speck of time on a speck of dirt, remember? Don't waste it. Don't sit there and think, if only I can get it this way, I'll be okay. That's not true. You get it any way you want, you'll find it won't be okay. Because until you're okay, it's not okay. And as long as you think there's a way it needs to be for you to be okay, you're not okay. That's not how it works. When you're okay with how it is, you're okay. And when you're okay with no matter how it will be, you're in great shape. And when you're okay with every way it ever was, you made it. You attained to a great state. You will be in a state of ecstasy. You will feel the same joy that those moments when someone feels when something goes the way they want, right? Someone you like comes and says they like you. How does that feel? I want you to feel that every minute of your life. Who said you can't? You did. You said, I only get to feel that when she comes up and tells me that she loves me for the first time. Because you must admit, don't tell anybody, but it gets less and less each time she says, you know, by the time you marry for 20 years and she says it all the time. You say, yeah, yeah, I love you too. The same thing, you get used to it. Why? You don't understand what's happening. That Shakti is always there. That's all that's happening is a rush of Shakti. That is always there. That is there every minute. Just any time, any moment, joy should shoot through your being until you're in ecstasy. That's what should be going on. Why is it not? Because you said it can't. You said, I don't like her sitting there. I want him to sit there. You said, this is taking too long, this talk. I have some place I'd rather be. In other words, I can't be in ecstasy now. Excuse me, I can't be in ecstasy now. There's someone else I'd rather be. You've got to catch on. That's what you're saying. And when you say that, the very act of saying that stops the flow of the Shakti. Because when the mind gets what it wants, the mind is like a door. It opens. When the heart gets what it wants, the heart is like a door. It opens. When the heart is open and the mind is open, that's when it happens, isn't it? That's why even people who don't know how to open their heart and never heard the term ever before and don't know how to open their mind and don't even know they have a mind, they think they are it, when someone that they got their eye on runs up to them and says, I've always been afraid to tell you, but I think you're the most handsome or beautiful person that ever lived, and I love you so much, and it runs away. Whoa. Bye-bye. Why? Because that makes the heart open, and that makes the mind open. Why? Because the heart and mind wanted that. And therefore, when they get what they want, they open. All right? They'll become much more open under those conditions. And then when they open, you'll see that these chakras are doors. They are doors to the flow of the prana, to the shakti. When they open, whoa, the shakti is always trying to push up, you will get a rush. If that person comes back and says, just kidding, nah, nah, not, <laughs> all right, you will notice that they close like that and that you no longer feel this rush of energy. Isn't that amazing? Haven't you noticed that? You've been alive all this time, living inside of that machine, and you don't understand anything about the way it works? That's how it works. So now you've got two choices right then. You either sit there and feel that I have to get them to not be kidding, 
I have to make sure that they do love me. I have to change my clothes. I have to wear deodorant. I have to do something in order to make sure it comes out the way I want or, or, or I have to find out how to keep my heart and mind open even if they say, just kidding, not. <laughs> then it doesn't change. Then it's non-conditional. And that's what you have. You have non-conditional joy, ever new joy. Those are your choices in your life. You either spend your will controlling, wishing, hoping, manipulating, fighting, struggling, so that once in a while you get a rush, or you spend your will fixing, healing, opening your being so that you always get a rush. I don't care if you ever attain to that state, you let it be indelibly marked within your being that you have the ability to always, always be in that state. And the only reason you are not is because of you. Because you are creating a melodrama. It has nothing to do with anyone else. Ramakrishna used to say, helter skelter, come what may. All right? Whatever comes. What's it got to do with me? I'm doing my speck of time on my speck of dirt. And this is just what happens. This is what came next. And it's fine. And if you can't handle it, there's something wrong with you. There's never anything wrong with anything else. It's just, this is what unfolding now. So basically, your work is in here. Your work is on your doors. Your work is on yourself. And to the extent that you're willing to stand on that truth, so now we've done three truths, which are absolute. The speck of time, the speck of dirt, and the fact that every single problem you have is self-generated. Every single problem that you have is self-generated. You say, no, no, you don't understand. You know, I had this car and I really liked it and someone stole it and I can't find it. It can't be replaced. You don't understand. It, like, no amount of money can replace it. It was like a one of a kind. And, 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 and Melodrama. Melodrama. You want to do that? Do it. You want to ruin your life? Ruin your life. You want to sit there and enjoy this car when it's there? Enjoy it when it's there. Don't renounce. If it's there, enjoy it. When it's gone, enjoy that it's gone. But it bothers me. Enjoy that it bothers you. Enjoy the experience of the experience, no matter what it is. If your heart is pouring wide open, going out towards somebody, enjoy what it feels like to be in love. If your heart is aching and ripping at you and feeling it's been you know, left behind and deceived and denied and wants to reach out and doesn't know where to go, enjoy the experience of the human heart. Feel what it's like to be human. Enjoy the experience. Honor the experience because it can't touch you. You are the one that's experiencing the experience. You are the consciousness. You are the self. You are the Atman. You are the soul. You are the being. And you are in there. And if the heart is open and going out, you are experiencing that. If the heart is closed and aching, you are experiencing that. To the day that you say, that's all I want, is whatever experience comes to me, this is my honor to experience this. How far will you go with this? When Ramana Maharshi, a great saint, very great saint, was in the Himalayas with his small clan of devotees, they were attacked by robbers. And they not only were robbed, but they were beat. And they came in with clubs and things, and they beat the master, they beat the disciples. And at one point, one of the disciples fought back or something, and Ramana Maharshi said, do not. Do not fight back. And the master let him in. I lay there, and the next morning, cleaned up, never talked about it. That's what happened now. Now you can sit here and say, that's crazy. That's insanity. You want to know why you say that? Because you're afraid it'll happen again. You didn't like the experience. You want to stop the experience. 
Ramana Maharshi is the one who stopped the experience because he experienced it only while it was happening. It then had no effect on his life from that moment forward. He neither feared that it would happen again. Why should he? It hadn't happened before. What do you think? Because it happened once, the probability is greater it will happen again. Probably the probability is less. You already rolled your dice. They already found out. You were enunciates. You didn't have anything. Whatever it was. Basically, there is no increased probability. There's only increased some scars. There's an increased impression that got made on you. So now every time you walk down the street, every time you hike a mountain, what comes up? That impression, that's some scar. So you got affected by it forever. He didn't. He processed it, experienced it, accepted it, and released it. Who won? He did. It left no impressions. Please, I know it's scary to even talk like this. You can forget it all when you walk out the door. But just for a moment, dare, dare to see the truth. The truth is that's what happened during that speck of time on that speck of dirt, isn't it? That's what happened. You want to ask why? Why was that bandit born when he was born? And why did he meet this person and that person? And why did his parents beat him? And why did that happen? And why did where he spent the night last night end up snowing so he walked this way? Why, 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 why? Why is everything in the universe the way it is? Because of all the forces that ever were have culminated in the now. Because the dinosaurs walked on the face of the earth, that guy ended up in that place at that time at the same moment you were. If one dinosaur took a step differently, something would have changed and it wouldn't have ended up that way. If he ate something different for breakfast three years earlier, he'd be off the schedule a little. You know, oh, this is good. <laughs> one extra bite. You know, just knock it all off. Why? Things are because of the forces that exist. And they all interact together and they make up the moment. And the moment becomes like a wave that moves all of it, causes, and become the effect that make up the next moment. And everything is interacting like that. And it ain't personal. It was not personal that that took place to those people at that time. Guess what? Nothing's personal. If somebody hates your guts, it's not personal. The fact that that person hates you got to do with his mother, got to do with his first wife, got to do with his genes, got to do with his teachers, got to do with who he ever met and who he ever didn't meet. There is so much going on in the fact that your hair is blonde and so was his mother's and the fact that you just happened to be in that place at that time to drop your newspaper so you bumped heads in the store or something. Who the heck knows what all of the factors are? They're big, aren't they? They are way beyond you. There's no why. There's just the experience of the moment. And the wise being understands that to minimize suffering, you don't make melodramas. You don't make melodramas. There's no value, none, in melodramas. You dare to experience reality. And you open, and the most miraculous thing happens. You find out you're fine. You find out you're fine. You find out someone came and loved you and showered you with love, and you were fine. And they left, and you don't know why, and your heart and mind are going banana and berserky, and all that's going on inside of you, and yet you're fine. Because you know it will pass, and you're willing to experience what you need to experience, and you don't hate the person, and you don't end up being afraid of other people. I want to see you go through it without some scars, without impressions. And it's not personal. You're not trying to figure out, what did I do? What's this? It's just, this is what took place. You mixed yellow and red and got orange. Don't ask me why. You mix yellow and red, you get orange. You mix this person and that person at this point in time with the stars this way and these some scars and these impressions, this is what you get. Orange. It's okay. And to the extent that you're willing, really willing, to face the music and dance with life, you will never have another problem as long as you live. Because you stop defining life as a problem. And you stop defining this is preferred 
and that is not preferred. It's so simple, but no one will do it. They all think that if they get it this way, they won't have any more problems. But they create every melodrama and every problem that ever lived in trying to get it that way. Remember that third Zen patriarch? The great way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. The great way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. So your path is your openness. Your path is your surrender. Your path is your acceptance. If you are creating melodrama, and we do, you will suffer. And then you will blame the suffering on other people, other experiences, and it will look like that's what's happening. It's not. It is because you set up that preference that you carried this with you. So your path will be as rapid as your willingness to live the truth. Don't sit there and tell me I'm growing too slow, I don't see any changes. That's because you're holding on. It's because you've let parts of it change, but I'm keeping this. I have the right. That's what I want to see. I want to see where you have the right to make yourself miserable. People do that. I have the right to be unhappy. You don't know what happened to me in my life. I have the right to be unhappy. I have the right not to trust people. You should see what's happened to me. You want the right to be miserable? Have fun. You want the right to be closed? You got the right. You got the right to do whatever you want. But you want to know what else? You have the right to be open. You have whatever right you want. Why do you want the right to be unhappy? Why do you want the right to not like somebody? You should see what they did to me. I have the right. I'm justified. Why do you want it? All it does is destroy you. Give up your rights. Let truth be right. Truth is right. God, do to me what you want. Huh? It's all just creation anyways. Bring to me what you want, and you will find that you have fun. I don't understand. People, they go to these fairs and Disney World and different things like that. It's not like every single ride is fairyland. They really got, you know, some scary things. It's not like everybody wants to just have everything sweet and everything all one way. That doesn't look like that. It's very important, all right? Just wake up in the morning and realize, I woke up on a planet in the middle of nowhere. What a funny place to be. And put your head down at night and say, it spun around on its axis again. Now it's not facing the sun where I am. I think I just close my eyes and go to sleep. And you wake up in the morning, you know what happened while you're sleeping? It kept spinning. And now where you are is starting to face that little star again. Ever think about that? Please think about that. Please think about that. And then when you see that star straight up ahead, remember, all it did was spin to where it's straight on. And then it's going to spin, and it's always happening. All right? As the world turns. I just thought that was a really poignant name for one of those melodramas. As the world turns, all that's going on as the world turns. Whoa, that is weird. So, this is your choice. Please accept this choice. You're making your own life. You make your own bed, and then you lay in it. If you want to be happy, you can be happy. If you want to have fun, you can have fun all the time. Don't cop out all the time. Just start watching when you close, and you will find that all your tension, that's what we started, right? Tension, all the stress factors, are because you are closing to the energies that are coming at you. If you resist and close, it creates tension. That's what tension is. It is you who decides in every experience in life dare to look at it. When you resist, you are unhappy. It creates stress and disturbance. When you accept, you are open and it's beautiful. Somebody sits there and wants to go on a picnic and it starts raining. To one person, it ruins their day. 
to the other person, they run out there and play in the rain, decide to do something else, all right? And they have fun with it. Why? Because they accepted it. Somebody else resisted it. It is your choice. So you work on these things. You work on these things so you can be a rarity on this earth. You can be a happy person. You can be a person without melodrama, a person without moods, a person that's always there when others come to you. You're like the rock at Gibraltar. It's always there. All right? That's a grace. You bring a great blessing to the people around you. How would you like to be around someone that wasn't moody and melodramatic and you knew all the time that your friend would be there? Not just their body, but them. You didn't have to worry about who you were going to find there tomorrow. Happens like that with people, doesn't it? Like somebody's possessing their body. It's a totally different person every time you go there. All right? No, you be different. And don't expect other people. That's the greatest. I can give you some clues. You ain't going to make it if you think you're taking anyone with you. You do it. You do it. Even if no one else does it, you do it. All right? And you will find that you create a force that is so powerful. And whoever comes into it will be lifted. Yogananda said, there's a tape I have of him. He said, you practice these teachings I've given you every day, every night. And whoever will see your eyes will be changed. This is the power of living truth. Mm, Dragger